What is up guys, 70 Savage here. Today we have a very exciting day. The bed system is 100% complete. I'm gonna give you guys all the updates, all the details. Let's go ahead and get into it. But before we do that, if you are new to the channel, I am currently converting this Sprinter van right here into a full-time tiny home. I have documented the entire process on this channel. So there's videos for the solar panels, the electrical system, the kitchen galley unit, the bench seat, the upper cabinets. If you're interested in van life and you want more updates when I make new videos, don't hesitate to slap that subscribe button. And now let's actually go ahead and get into it. All right guys, so the previous video on this sliding bed system when I just had the frame ready, got quite a bit of traction. So what I wanted to do is now that the entire bed system is complete with the mattress and everything, and I've had it for a few months, I wanted to go over all of the details, all of the updates, and give you guys an idea of what this thing looks like in its completed form. So you might be wondering, what is this sliding bed system and why did I decide to make it? When I was designing my van, I wanted this to be a very comfortable full-time living quarters that I could use to travel around the United States while I work remotely. And in order to do that, what I needed in this van was a shower, a bathroom, well, just a toilet, running water, electricity, all of the stuff that we're used to in a regular home. Um, the biggest drawback when you're designing a 144 inch wheelbase sprinter van is fitting that shower portion. So this sliding bed system's main purpose is a solution for having a shower in my van. So looking at it from inside of the back doors, you can get a better idea of how this is made and what it's made out of. The entire structure is made out of 8020 aluminum. I used standard 8020 extrusions and 8020 connectors. There are two 8020 extrusions that attach directly to the side of the van. There are five plus nuts with 5 16 bolts attaching those to the side of the van. Each plus nut is rated for 500 pounds of holding strength, so I could have, uh, you know, some serious slumber parties in here. In terms of what's attached to the piece that's attached to the van, there is another extrusion that supports the sliding bearing, allowing that front half to slide in. From there, the cross beams are attached to that directly, and then we have the mattress supports on top of that. You can see on the back portion here, I used as much space as I possibly could and extended the head space into the area of the rear doors. One of the most challenging parts about this whole design is that those linear bearings have three eighths of an inch between the two crossbars and none of the 80-20 parts are designed to support those additional three eighths of an inch. So that required me to cut little three eighths of an inch pieces here, another one right here, with some awkward attachments. And that also rippled out to the rest of the system requiring me to take note of those 3 eighths of an inch and make up for them in all sorts of different places. As you're sliding this bed frame back, these sides of the bed frame are no longer supported. So you might wonder how do those end up making it onto that back crossbar? The way that that happens is these little ski jumps that I put that inter intercept the sagging unsupported ends of these extrusions and push them on up to the back here. Let's take a look at that from the top. So simply pulling back the comforter and taking off the sheets exposes the biggest change since the last video, which is this four piece mattress. Let's take a closer look at what this mattress is made out of. So if I flip this piece over right here, that gives us a better idea of what the underside looks like. These right here are Baltic birch pieces. They're quarter inch thick, so they're very light and thin. Um, I drilled the holes in them myself using just a Forstner bit going through on both sides to minimize the amount of blowout. The mattress itself is made out of five inches of foam. The bottom three inches are a soft latex foam and the top two inches are a firm memory foam. I say firm memory foam, but memory foam 
even at its firmest, is very, very soft. It is then wrapped in this kind of thick canvas fabric, and I had it all put together once I came up with the materials by a local seamstress who did a fantastic job. Something to note about the mattress sections is that all of the inside edges on each section have an additional half inch of foam protruding from them. The reason I did that is so that once I put the sheets on, which are very tightly fit, um, it kind of compresses the whole mattress together. So unless you are the princess in the pea, you are not gonna feel these inside edges. The main reason I had to make this four sections instead of just two is because when it was two sections, which trust me, I tried, it's actually almost impossible to maneuver these things through the van since they're the same width as the van or same width minus about an inch on each side. Um, having them be four sections makes it much easier to collapse and remake this bed. So you might be wondering why each one of these mattress sections is such an awkward shape. Why don't they line up with each other? That's actually by design. They needed to be this shape for a couple of reasons. First of all, the reason that these center edges don't line up is because since there's four sections instead of two, and these gaps are fairly wide, I needed to make sure that each edge lined up on the middle of one of the 80-20 crossbars. The length of each one of the mattress sections was also very intentional. When the frame is collapsed, the length of the sections matches up with the size of the collapsed bed frames. I made sure to leave enough of a gap around all of the outside edges to accommodate for wall paneling, which will eventually be up here. And just to make sure that when I'm moving these things around, I wanted to reduce the chance that it's going to scratch and scuff all of the surfaces on the outside. Another change from the first video that you guys might've noticed is that there was previously three inch risers on top of each one of these corner braces here um, that raised the entire bed frame by three inches. The original purpose for that was so that I could fit my bike underneath here. Um, unfortunately, I felt like I was gonna break my ankles in the middle of the night every time I jumped off this thing to get a sip of water. So I decided to sacrifice the bike, get a bike rack on the back, and reduce this thing to a more reasonable height. Oh, and reducing the bed frame height by three inches also allows me to sit up perfectly straight in bed or pretty darn close to it. If you wanted to sit up here, you definitely could. Speaking of sitting up here while the mattress is collapsed, a lot of you guys asked me if I could fold the back section of the mattress up against the wall and turn it into a pseudo couch. Um, and that does work, kind of. The reason I say kind of is because when I showed you guys before that I had to make up for this corner that sticks out, um, the overall width of the backmost section here is actually less than the overall width of the mattress itself. Therefore, both pieces don't fit up simultaneously. Obviously, I could just like set this one over here somewhere and uh, put that one in the center if I wanted, but it does work, it's just not designed for that. You could theoretically design a system that the back section goes up against the wall um, before those awkward corner cutouts, but that would be quite a bit of complexity added to this already fairly complex bed frame. I haven't actually built the shower yet, but this corner right here is where the shower is going to go. I'm gonna build a shower pan that's a similar height as the water system cabinet. By the way, there is a video on the entire water system on my channel. And the curtain for the shower is going to typically live right down here and then be hoisted up to magnetize to the ceiling when you wanna take a shower. As far as the sheets and the waterproof mattress cover go, I had to get these custom ordered for the custom dimensions that fit this mattress perfectly. And I will put a link to that website in the description below. They're actually really high quality. Although the sheets are custom, the comforter is not. This is just a standard queen size comforter. It's 90 inches by 90 inches. Um, I ordered both of these things on Amazon. I'll put links to those in the description below as well. All right, so the question you guys have all been waiting for, how much did this bed system cost? Well, to put it bluntly, the frame and all the materials for that cost me about 1200 bucks in 8020 aluminum extrusions and connectors. And the mattress cost me 1600 bucks with all of the materials and all of the labor needed by the seamstress. Now, that's a shocking amount of money. 
And I think a better question is not how much it costs me to build it, but how much it would cost you to build it if you did the same thing. A lot of the money, in fact, about 50% of the money that I spent on this system ended up getting swallowed in mistakes. If you wanted to build this system, knowing everything you know now from watching my videos, you could get away with building the frame in the exact same way for roughly $650 or $700, and you could build the mattress for about $800 all in. So you might be wondering, how in the heck did you make that many mistakes that cost you that much money? Um, for the bed frame itself, the aluminum extrusion, I originally ordered them in 60 inches and just started getting cranking on the build. Um, as you probably heard previously, the overall length of the bed is 72 inches. So all of the cross beams that I cut that support the mattresses had really inefficient usage of 80-20 extrusions. If you just buy them in 72 inches, you can already save a few hundred bucks right there. In terms of the mattress, I made a huge mistake in the original measurements, and I did not leave nearly enough room around all of the edges for wall paneling, and there was it was just way too tight of a squeeze to get these panels in here. Um, so I had to get the entire thing redone. In the meantime, I also decided I wanted a bit of a firmer mattress, so I bought an additional sheet of soft latex foam. Originally, I had firm. Um, I also had to end up buying twice the fabric for the seamstress to use. So that cost me a ton of money to get that redone. But now you know, and you won't have to make that same mistake. If I didn't mention it before, you wanna leave about an inch around all of the exterior edges um, in order to accommodate for wall paneling and allow enough room for these things not to fit too ridiculously tight. So my overall consensus for this mattress system is it's pretty dang awesome. I would definitely recommend doing this if you need that additional space in your van to accommodate a shower or something else. Um, if you don't need that additional space, it's absolutely not worth doing this. Just build a regular fixed bed system. It'll cost you, you know, half as much. Um, but this came out exactly how I originally envisioned it, which is very rare when you're designing something for the first time. So there were a lot of mistakes along the way, some of which were costly, some of which were time consuming but I overcame them and ended up with a bed frame that fits my needs perfectly. And that makes me really happy. So hopefully this also makes you guys happy and more importantly, teaches you guys enough to build something like this on your own. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comment section below. I'll try and get to those as quickly as possible. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more updates to the van in the future, if you are interested in seeing how my travels go when this thing is done in a full-on van tour and want to know about it before anybody else, slap that subscribe button below and slap that notifications bell to get notified anytime I make a new video. If you did like the video, go ahead and hit that like button and feel free to leave a comment with your feedback. Love hearing your guys' feedback in the comment section. Other than that, Hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you next time.